that time again. Yep. We are Team Wester, and you are the most important thing to us. Team Wester podcast. It's all about the team. Welcome to the inaugural Team Wester podcast. My name is Clay Moden, and this is a brand new series of interviews and conversations with players and staff from your favorite Buffalo football team. Uh, today we're going to be talking with Buffalo backup quarterback and our good friend, Matt Barkley. All right, Matt Barkley is joining us. Thanks for being here. This is great. Thanks. Uh, it's going to be a fun chat. Welcome back to Buffalo. Yes. I, <laughs> so, I am so glad to, to have back. you guys back. This is like a second home. And uh, yeah, when I knew I was coming back here in free agency, I got very excited. So this is awesome. Do you uh, have a place that you store all the jerseys from the various teams that you've been on? I've got a duffel bag with quite a few jerseys now. Uh, my kids are kind of confused as to who to cheer for, but without a doubt, they're old enough now to remember even when I was here last. And so uh, they cheer for the Bills, but I do have quite the collection of jerseys so far. What's it like at home when you have kids, you know, at the level you're at? Is it something where they're like, you know, are they fans of football? Or are they like, this is my dad does, this is his career? Yeah, they're football fans. They love watching it. And again, they're old enough. They're only six and seven years old, but they are old enough to understand the game now and really what's going on. Um, so they like watching football. They don't play yet, but, I mean, they're full swing in five other sports. So the the time will come when, when they do get to play football, but uh, they kind of get what dad does now, which is fun to be able to share those moments and memories with them now. So I have a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old, all boys. And it's interesting to see how, how they develop. Like, you can tell already who's going to be an athlete and who may maybe not. And is that the case for your kids as well? Yeah, they're all studs. They, they, my wife was a collegiate athlete as well. She played soccer. And so I think they get their speed and their, a lot of their genetics from her, uh, which is helpful. And they love really everything. I, I, baseball, soccer, swim team, basketball. They're, they're doing it all. And they, yeah, they, they love sports. Do you think kids today are pressured too much to play sports? Um, I mean, how does that work in your family? It's like, if this is what you want to do, we'll encourage that. I mean, we're not forcing them to do right. whatever they want. They love it. They, First of all, boys have way too much energy as it is to be sitting around the house. So it's a good way to get their bodies moving and uh, get some energy out of the way. They do love it. I think at a, at a certain point, though, uh, if you're just running them into the ground, playing too many things, and they're just absolutely drained and can't even focus on anything, then... You might have to take a step back and rethink a few things, but uh, as of right now, they, they absolutely love just, you know, they're playing with their friends. They have a blast. Uh, they love it. They want to go to practices and stuff like that, so I'm encouraging it. The, the vibe around Buffalo uh, is intense right now for the Buffalo Bills, and is that something that you guys try to block out and just focus on the day-to-day -day operations of what you do, or is it easy to get caught up in that? I, I don't know how good my meter is on on judging the the vibe i guess i'm we're so focused in and dialed in on accomplishing you know one day at a time and and getting better it's hard to kind of to gauge that but at the same time when you you know in season and you got thousands of fans welcoming you home at the airport you can kind of tell all right we, there's something going on here and so i think you just kind of are aware of that as we progress but right now this time of year especially we haven't done anything and uh, I think there's a lot to prove still uh, on this team and our guys are optimistic about what's what's ahead but we have to put in that work first absolutely what's it like with you and Josh I mean how often do you guys communicate about the playbook uh, regular life I mean is it something where you guys are in contact with each other all the time because I would imagine you got to stay in step with each other a lot yeah we we talk all the time we live 10, 15 minutes away from each other in the off season. Uh, so whether it's golf or he'll, he'll take his dog to the park where my kids will play and we'll just hang out, um, have meals together, whatever that looks like. Uh, I think it's important. We, we emphasize, you know, the friendship aspect outside of the facility, not necessarily all ball all the time where it's, you know, I'm constantly talking football. That's, it gets a little draining. Um, so emphasizing that friendship and that, camaraderie aspect of, of football outside of the building. Uh, but when we're here and when we're, you know, in the building or on the field doing as much as I can, yeah, to keep 
to stay engaged and to um, just bounce ideas off on different plays or what he's thinking, giving my perspective, I think is you know just good to help us all grow as a QB room. What's the, what's your way to relax or unwind? You know, following a game or a week or or whatever. I mean, is it you know for me? I said I've got three kids too, so it's like. I want to be out with the kids. Like, I don't want to do radio stuff. I want to do, I just want to focus on what the family's doing. Is it a similar thing for you? Yeah, in season, absolutely. Whether that's like a walk with the family, uh, going to the park, uh, or just playing with them, wrestling with my boys. That is a fantastic time for me to just get my mind off football, focus on on family. Um, they bring me life. They bring me joy, kind of refill me up um, to get my mind off of football. In the off season. Uh, usually looks like playing golf. Um, I just, it's my happy place. Um, I play the guitar as well, so whether that's with the kids or just around the house, that's a good way for me to kind of unwind and distract myself with you know something other than football. Do you have a favorite genre or artist that you play on the guitar at all? Uh, just anything acoustic uh, is kind of what I stick to. So whether it's Jack Johnson or... Um, I don't know, the, those those kind of casual mm-hmm. SoCal beachy vibes, I guess. <laughs> well, the the season is looking bright, and uh, obviously there's you know a lot of excitement for the team right now. It's all or nothing this year, it feels like. Uh, yes, I guess from a lot of people's perspectives, again, from our point of view, it's one day at a time, and um, I guess we have put a lot of pieces together to make it seem like it's it's all or nothing this year. Um, with some of the, the guys that we've signed this off season, but I, I think from our perspective, we we've, we've come so far, uh, uh, but we still need to put in that work and still need to have that same approach, like it was Josh's rookie year. Like we still have a lot to prove, a lot to do, and so it's been a good start to the off season program so far with OTAs and getting guys in and being on the same page. So I think just continue to build on that, and uh, but. Overall, I think we're in a really good place. And, again, Coach McDermott has built a great culture to, you know, have everyone on the on the same path with the same goal in mind. Excellent. Matt Barkley, thank you for your time. Best, best of luck this year. There we go. Keep listening. We've got some more great conversations coming soon from Deion Dawkins, Dawson Knox, Devin Singletary, and Reed Ferguson. And until next time, let's go Buffalo and Team West Hurts.